Handbook Orientation. Once again, you will be responsible for being familiar with the contents of the handbook. And this is a resource for you if you're wanting to know rules and regulations of the KCKCC nursing program. I'm not going to read the handbook to you. However, I am going to point out some important pieces that we want to reinforce to you over and over again that is important for you to know. In the didactic or the classroom course, including on-campus labs, an absence, these can add up. You know, if you're tardy, we keep track of the time that you come in. If you miss a day, we keep track of that amount of time. And if you miss more than 20% of the class meeting time, you will automatically fail the course. Tardiness means missing no more than 30 minutes of the class, and this also includes early exit. But again, we keep track of the time that you arrive and the time that you leave. Understand that your instructors, very few of them, will accept late work. If you contact your instructor prior to a due date or time, you may receive consideration for acceptance of that particular assignment, but it's your responsibility to let your instructor know if you are having issues. As far as attending simulation, you do not have simulation until the second semester of the PN program. And you are expected to attend all simulation sessions in order for an absence to be considered excused, you have to personally phone, text, or email the designated simulation faculty member prior to the start time. You cannot phone a friend and say, would you please tell Miss or Mr. So-and-so, you have to do it yourself. As far as simulation rules, when you do get into simulation and in the lab, understand that your mannequins are to be treated with the utmost respect, just as though they were the actual patient. And this includes the principles of patient privacy, confidentiality, and safety. So in other words, don't go out to a classmate who has not been in the room performing a checkoff or uh, taking care of a client, maybe it was a test, etc., and start telling them, and this includes simulation, well, this is what we did today. Oh, it was so exciting, or oh, I hated it, etc. You have to maintain that confidentiality and understand that the skin of the mannequins will be stained if you use ink of any kind, and that includes a pen or a marker, or we use betadine. So we do not allow those to be around our uh, mannequins. If you are in a lab situation, carry a pencil in your pocket. As far as clinical attendance, you have to be available for orientation during the two weeks prior to the start of the semester. Now, I think that is more for the RN program, but understand that orientation cannot be rescheduled or made up. Most of the PN program, we do orientation the first day of the clinical. So don't schedule any trips or vacations during the this time. 
if you miss a clinical session and you are required to attend every session, the State Board of Kansas determines the number of clinical hours that are required to successfully pass a course. If you do not meet those requisite number of hours, then you may not pass the course. And this is not just the facility uh, of KCKCC, it's the state. So very, very important. During an eight-week clinical course, you, uh, if you miss a clinical, you have to make up that clinical. And you can do that with an assignment. If you have a second absence, then it will result in failure of that clinical course. And not only the clinical course, the didactic course that is associated with it. For example, your fundamentals or foundation class has a clinical associated with it. And if you fail the clinical for your foundations, you automatically fail the foundations class. And you have to retake both of those. Again, there's more clinical attendance information here. Talking about excuse tardies, you cannot arrive 30 minutes late to a clinical site. You just can't do it. Your clinical instructor will send you home. But you have to notify your instructor prior to the start of the clinical for it to be an excused tardy. The first occurrence, you will be allowed to participate, but you still have to meet with the instructor. Second, you don't get to stay. You have to go home. That constitutes an absence. And you will have to make up the assignment. The third occurrence, you're going to get an, an excused absence. You will not be allowed to attend the clinical. You have to complete a makeup assignment and a professionalism module. A second occurrence of an unexcused absence, you fail the course. As far as snow days with clinical, if clinical, there is a weather related cancellation, your instructor will hold a virtual clinical session on the same clinical day and during the same hours as the scheduled clinical. You have to be in uniform for the session, be required to have that computer access and be on the camera at all times as required by your instructor. Uh, this is vital. You can't be laying in bed, uh, in your pajamas. You have to be up and alert, um, in uniform, dressed appropriately, etc. As far as simulation, I'll let you read that there. Again, you will have simulation the second semester and you will only have four days of simulation. As far as holidays, if the college is closed for a holiday, you are not required to attend clinical. However, you still have to reach that minimum number of clinical days, those clinical hours. Um, there are occasions where you might go ahead and have clinical on that day if that is what the the group and the instructor decide. Failure of a course is defined as any of the following, and I have mentioned this in a previous uh, presentation. 
you have to have in the classroom an exam average of 74% at least and a comprehensive score of less or if you have an exam average of less than 74% or you have a comprehensive course score of less than 76% for the first eight weeks, you will fail. If you have an exam average or comprehensive course score of less than 76% for the remaining P in courses, you will fail. So basically you need that 74% exam average and 76% overall course average the first eight weeks and you need 76% in both areas this, the remainder of the program. If you fail to successfully complete a clinical, maybe you had too many absences or too many tardies, uh, you can fail the clinical. If you withdraw at any point with an exam average or comprehensive score below the percentages listed above, that is considered a failure. And if you miss more than 20% of the scheduled class time, you will fail. As far as labs go, you should have your red duffel bag. It is a supply kit that can be purchased in the bookstore and it is going to contain all of the materials that you need for pharmacology and foundations lab slash clinical within it. The sterile supplies in the kit are not to be opened until your instructor tells you to do so. For the second eight weeks, you will have to get the black bag. That will be for the IV therapy lab. Again, do not open anything in that kit until you are instructed to do so. I do want to point out that we have limited time in our labs to be able to teach you a skill, for you to practice a skill, and for you to check off on a skill. This does not always allow you to be the most competent. We learn our skills by muscle memory, by doing it over and over and over and over and over again, and then do it again and again and again. That is how you become competent in a skill. So we do have open lab times available and this open lab schedule is posted outside of 2602, the uh, lab in the upstairs health professions area. Something else that you need to be familiar with is that lab and simulation attire is the same as clinical attire. In other words, hair up, uniforms on, uh, wearing the appropriate uniform, name tags, having your pen, pencil in your pocket, etc. Part of your lab attire, and I want to point this out, is having that pin. You need to have a permanent marker. For example, sometimes we will be doing a dressing change and we have to date and initial the dressing when it was put on. You need your bandage scissors at all times and your pin light along with your stethoscope. You have to have those. You also should have some type of paper in your pocket to be able to take notes on. You are not going to remember everything that happens uh, as far as maybe vital signs or the time that you gave a pain medication, etc. You have to write this stuff down. 
you also have to have a watch with a sweep hand. Something that's optional are hemostats. These are like the locking pliers. Uh, they're specially designed for nurses. And let me tell you, I carried two pair in my pocket when I worked on the floor and I used them all the time, but they're not required. As far as lab guidelines, <coughs> excuse me, you are expected to participate in helping maintain cleanliness and order of the lab. We're your instructors, we're not your mothers. It's not the instructor's responsibility to clean up after you. You are all adults and you can do your part. Understand that in your bags, you may have simulation medications. These are just what it says. They're simulation medications. They're not real medications. Do not consume them. Students are not to be allowed in the simulation or skill labs without faculty or staff supervision. And you should not perform any task without first receiving direction from the instructor. So how are you going to be successful in this nursing program? We're giving you all these, but if you do this, you're going to fail scenarios. Well, let's give you some scenarios to help you be successful. You have received an honor and a privilege to be selected for the nursing program. Uh, there's people who are not allowed in. Faculty, staff, administration hope that you remember that you worked hard to be where you're at and you need to continue to work hard to successfully achieve your goal of becoming a nurse. So attend class, lab, and clinical awake, aware, and prepared to be an active learner every time. You can learn from any situation. I have been a nurse for decades and let me tell you, I am still learning almost on a daily basis. Communicate clearly and use appropriate communication techniques with you, not only your instructor, but your classmates and your clients. Make sure that you understand that absence and lateness policy and you abide by it. Once again, if you're on time, consider yourself to be late. Make sure that you arrive at least five to 10 minutes early. I cannot stress this enough. It's disruptive to the class. It's disruptive to the clinical. It takes away from your required time in clinical or classroom, etc. So it can have disastrous consequences if you are habitually late. Complete every assignment, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's in the clinical, whether it's simulation, whether it's lab. Demonstrate a willingness to attempt difficult thinking, writing, and skill performances. You are constantly going to be pushed to learn something new, and you have to be up for that challenge. Believe in your own potential. We believe in you. We know what it takes to get through this program. We know what it takes to be a successful nurse. And we are going to push you to be better than you thought you could ever be. But you need to believe in yourself also. Demonstrate the effort to form positive attitudes and habits. Demonstrate an open mind when encountering unfamiliar ideas, people, and activities. This is an adventure that you're going on. You have a lot to learn. Listen with respect to not only your instructor, but also to your classmates. 
and accept responsibility for your own actions. Don't try and place the blame on someone else and accept the consequences of your actions without whining or appealing if your behavior falls outside the behavior outlined in the standards of the department. Be a professional. Listen to and learn from constructive criticism. We are paid to determine what you're doing incorrectly and help you figure out a way to improve it. So listen to us. We're just trying to help make you better. We believe in you and we want you to succeed. Make sure that you're checking your email frequently. You need to do this at least once a day to make sure that you're not missing any important information. And not only check your email, but also check for announcements in your courses. And this includes that organizational course that you signed up for prior to today. Make sure that you avoid those social networks and personal email addresses during class, clinical, or any tutorial sessions. You know, social media can be fun. It can be entertaining. But understand that your prospective employers they look at social media and if you have anything that's questionable or inappropriate, it may keep you from getting a job. Make sure that you are attending Open Lab uh, at least twice a semester to practice and review the skills that you've learned. It is available for not only the RN students, it's available for you. You have just as much right to be there as anyone else and the right to practice those skills. Take advantage. Develop a group of peers to learn together with. Uh, consider working as a group, studying, practicing skills, and holding one another accountable through constructive criticism. Remember, you can do this. Some additional suggestions. We understand that a lot of you have to work. You just have to in order to be able to support you and or your family. We strongly recommend that you limit your employment to 20 hours a week or less. This nursing school is a full-time job, so be aware that you can become overwhelmed very easily. So limit your hours. I do want to point out that there is a PN scholarship available. It's called the Hazel Clegg PN Scholarship. They provide a significant uh, scholarship to usually more than one student, uh, but at least one, one student. And they do this twice a year. So make sure that you apply if you meet these requirements. So look at the requirements. You have to be a resident of Kansas. You have to be a full-time student. It is based on financial need and academic performance. As far as the testing policy, again, I'm not going to read everything, but there's some important things that I really want to point out. And I have brought this to your attention before. In the practical nursing program, you have to have that average of 74% or higher on your exams. In the overall, and in the overall course, 76% in the first eight weeks. The second eight weeks, it bumps up to 76% across the board. 
and you have to pass all those clinical lab simulation portions that are involved with that course. We do not round to get you to that appropriate number. So make sure that you you get at least the 76%, etc. As far as clinical lab and simulation, it's a pass or fail. Uh, you don't get grades for that, but you have to pass it in order to pass the didactic portion. This is the grading scale. You have to have a C or higher to be able to pass this program. As far as testing, all exams will be taken on campus. Unless, for example, it's one of your ATI practice exams, that will be taken on your own time. Uh, unless you arrange previously with your instructor to miss an exam. However, I do not recommend missing an exam because then you have to do the makeup test and it might contain different questions. It may contain different formats such as fill in the blank or essay. That is strictly up to your instructor. You are expected to arrive in class early enough to begin that test at start time. You will receive 1.5 minutes per question. Once you start taking the NCLEX, or I'm sorry, the next generation style questions, which you'll get some more information on that as we go along, then you'll get a little bit more time for those questions. You cannot wear hoodies jackets or hats during a test. Leave them at home. If you think you're going to be cold in the classroom, wear a long sleeve shirt or a sweatshirt. But no hoodies, nothing with pockets in the front. No hats. You cannot have anything on your table or desk that has not been provided by your instructor. This includes drinks etc. If you start a test, you're not allowed to get up in the middle of the test and leave the room to go to the bathroom. So go to the bathroom before you sit down for the test. If you are having some issue, for example, uh, I have had a student who was newly pregnant and was going through morning sickness and informed me ahead of time, you know, if I have to leave, it's because of morning sickness. And I didn't want her vomiting in the classroom. So she would be allowed to leave in those situations. However, those are extreme situations. You are not allowed to leave. Go to the bathroom first. If you arrive greater than 10 minutes, you will not be allowed to take the exam unless you have previously notified your instructor and made arrangements. So if you miss a test, then you are expected to take the test on your first day back on campus. We do reviews of the exams. Uh, for example, I will do a review of my exam the first class period after the exam is taken. You are not allowed to take any notes or record anything from that review session. We do encourage questions, but uh, your instructors will give you direction as you go along. If it is a uh, situation where you are unable to make an appointment and come into the office to review a test or you miss the review, we cannot review an exam online.
understand that you are going to have a variety of questions on each exam. You will have a dosage calculation, a couple of questions per exam. You're going to have select all that apply questions, which is the ones that nursing students learn to hate. You will have uh, multiple choice questions. You will have fill in the blank, which will be those dosage calculations. The first eight weeks, you will receive partial credit for all of your multiple choice questions, or select all that apply questions. Thereafter, uh, for example, the second eight weeks when you're with me in nursing care of the adult, you will receive partial credit if I do not indicate how many correct answers are within the question. If I indicate how many correct answers that you should be looking for, you do not receive partial credit. <coughs> if you achieve less than 80% on any exam, you are required to do exam specific remediation as assigned by your instructor. It is your responsibility as a student to complete that remediation by the deadline assigned and failure to do so can result in course failure. Understand that you are going to need to be studying at least three hours a week for each credit hour that you are taking. Make sure that you arrive on time and like I said, at least five to 10 minutes early. Review all of your assignments prior to class to prepare for your class. Otherwise, you are not going to be getting much out of the activities and information that is provided during the class. And most important of all, in nursing school, forget how you have done things before or how you have seen things done in the workplace. We're teaching you the quotation textbook method of doing things and we will be testing you on the textbook method, not on what you have seen done or the way you have done things in the past. <laughs>